there are correlations between brain activity and subjective experience. So if you want to throw that away, we still have to explain these correlations. We cannot just dismiss it out of hand. We need an alternative if we are to, to be serious and honest. And that's what I'm going to propose to you, an alternative. Bear with me. Um, I'll do it in several slow steps because it it's, it's extremely simple. That's why it's difficult. It's so bloody simple that it's hard to see. So I'll try to lead you into a different way of seeing things. Here's how it goes. When you see lightning in the sky, that beautiful image, when you see that, do you have any reason to believe that lightning is the cause of atmospheric electric discharge? Is lightning causing electrical discharge? It's not. It's the way electrical discharge looks. It's the image of the process. It's not the cause of the process. I will not even say it's the consequence. I'll just say it's the image. It's the way it looks. There's nothing more to it. Flames. Are flames causing combustion? Or are flames the way combustion looks? It just looks. When it happens, it looks like flames. It's the way we register it. Right? One more example. A blood clot. This is an image of the process of coagulation. It's the image of a process. It's not causing coagulation. It's the image of it. It's the way it looks. And as an image, it is not the process. The process is this. You don't need to understand this. Okay, this is just uh, to give you a sense of what I mean. The image is not the process. When you see me, you see an image. You don't see me. There's stuff inside my body you don't see. You don't see my back. An image does not contain all relevant information about the process. It's a point of view on the process. It correlates with it, but it's not complete. It's not the cause. It's the way it looks from a certain point of view. So far, so good. Right? Now think of a stream. Water flows unconstrained through the stream. But if there is a process of self-localization of water in the stream, then water stops flowing unconstrained and stays circling a certain point, it stays localized, self-localization. That process of self-localization of water in a stream has an image. It looks like something. We call it a whirlpool. There is nothing to the whirlpool but water. Yet you can point at it and say, there's a, whirl a whirlpool. It's discernible. You can even try to put boundaries on it and say, here the whirlpool ends. Right? You cannot lift the whirlpool out of water. Right? It's a pattern of water movement. It's the image of a process in water. My claim is that the body, I'll talk about the brain to be more specific, but this applies to the entire body is a whirlpool in the stream of mind. Brain activity correlates with experience because it's the image of a self-localization process of mind. In the same way that a whirlpool is the image of a self-localization process in water. The brain doesn't generate the mind for exactly the same reason that a whirlpool doesn't generate water. You cannot lift the brain out of mind for the same reason that you can't lift a whirlpool out of water. Are you with me? Yet, because it's the image of the process, it correlates with the first person view of consciousness. My consciousness, my individual consciousness, in my view, is a kind of whirlpool in the flow of mind. That's why my awareness is limited. It's localized, it circles around a certain point. I lose awareness of the stream. I lose awareness of the rest of what's going on in the universe. I have become localized. If you look at that process of localization, that is me, it will look to you in a certain way. And that's exactly what you see right now. It's my face, my body. If you crack open my skull and you look at my brain, that's the way it looks. In the same way, 
that atmospheric electric, dis electric discharge will look like lightning, or that coagulation will look like clots. The image is in the process. You're not seeing me. You're not seeing my awareness. In the same way that a clot is not the process of coagulation. It correlates with it, but it is not it. It's an image of it from your perspective. From my perspective, reality is going on all around me. I am the center of the world. I am right here, in the middle of the world bowl. From your perspective, I am somewhere else. And you see my whirlpool as Bernardo, standing right here. Yeah? Now, we are not alone. So there are multiple whirlpools in the stream of mind. And there is something that we call reality outside of ourselves. How do we make sense of this, right? Now, notice that besides the whirlpools, there are all kinds of undulations in water. That will be a model for us of the rest of the stream of mind that is not localized. It's all one mind, but parts of it are not localized. They don't form whirlpools. That will be the rest of the world. That will be the rocks, the stars, the planets, whatever. Those undulations propagate through the water and they may penetrate multiple whirlpools, injecting the same information on multiple whirlpools. And we will perceive that once it penetrates our whirlpools. The rim of our whirlpools, our sense organs, our skin, our eyes, our ears. If these undulations from mind, from parts of mind that are not part of our process of self-localization, penetrate it, we will register it as an external reality outside of the control of our volition. Like the part of our minds that generates our nightmares. We don't have control over that. Otherwise, we would never have nightmares. Yet, it's clearly in mind. Same thing here. The world seems to be outside of our control, seems to be separate. That doesn't mean it's not in mind. It only means it's not in our psychic structure. It's not in our whirlpools. And because whirlpools are dynamic processes, they leave an imprint. They emit undulations, they create disturbances in its surroundings. When I speak, I disturb the air. Air waves propagate, vibrations in those waves propagate. They reach our ears, they penetrate our whirlpools. That's why we can talk to each other. None of this requires this enormously abstract metaphysical world outside of subjective experience. This enormous leap of faith that is not only improvable, it's necessary. If there, ever, if there ever was a candidate to be sliced out of existence, existence by Occam's razor, it ought to be realism. It ought to be this lunatic notion that the real reality is outside of the only carrier of reality we can ever know, which is subjective experience. This is lunacy. We don't need a new physics to see the world in the way I'm proposing to you. Physics are our way to model the patterns and regularities of the undulations, undulations outside the whirlpools. By saying that everything is in mind, one is not saying that you can control all reality. Reality can still unfold according to very strict patterns and regularities totally outside the control of your ego. And we can model, discover and model those patterns and regularities. That's what we call science. None of this invalidates science. It's just a way of seeing. I'm not saying that you are whirlpools. You don't look anything like whirlpools. What I'm saying is that a whirlpool is a metaphoric way of seeing what you are. Undulations in the stream of mind is a metaphorical way of seeing photons, scent molecules, airway vibrations in the form of sounds. I'm not trying to replace the real images of reality with whirlpools and streams. I'm just trying to convey a way of seeing in it. Science is neutral as far as ways of seeing. Science just models uh, 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 phenomena and outcomes. The way you see that is up to you. It's ontology. It's philosophy. It's not science.